Hello there, my fellow battle brothers, and welcome back to your weekly dose of the Space Marine Chapters lore. Today, we're gonna be resuming our rather lengthy coverage on the interesting Loyalist chapter known as the Sons of Dorn, no less than part 3 of their coverage. So, previously, we did talk about their history quite a lot and several campaigns that they took part in. Today, however, we're gonna detail on a few different things, including the chapter homeworld, the culture of that world, and the chapter organization. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Sons of Dorne chapter's homeworld is Archaea, a lush, temperate world with a global climate very similar to that of Terra's ancient Mediterranean region. It has some very large land masses, but the majority of its land area is made up of many island chains. Archaea is a feudal world, which has never progressed far beyond a pre-industrial state, and their most advanced technology is reserved for the larger cities and the ruling elite. Though the planet is dotted with several large cities, it is mainly covered by small townships and farming villages. Of course, each one of these is usually dominated by a sprawling villa, belonging to some ancient member of the patrician or noble class. The cities are described by many imperial visitors as being both majestic and breathtaking. The neoclassical architecture of the world is very similar to that of Macrag or the ancient Romani from Terra. Built mostly from white marble, the Archaeans constructed monuments involving both architectural and engineering skill, including vast edifices like bridges, aqueducts, amphitheaters, and triumphal arches as well as temples and palaces for the patricians. Archaea was once considered a world of beauty, with its rolling green hills, crystal clear seas, deep luscious forests and majestic cities. However, almost all of that is now nothing more than a fond memory, after the world was ravaged by a splinter fleet of High Fleet Leviathan. The world is now bare and desolate, with only a few barely inhabited cities remaining. Only a small force of Astartes remained to protect the chapter homeworld when the Tyranids came, for most of the chapter had left to prowl the stars to seek out battles and enemies of humanity in their newly gifted space fortress. Archaea is a hierarchical and class-conscious society, but there is always the possibility of movement between the classes, because class is no longer determined solely by birth. For the most part, Archaean society is described as a republic, although the Sons of Dorne themselves are known to take control of the state in times of great emergency. Family lines, the so-called lineages, play a very important part within Archaean society, extending even into the culture of the chapter itself. Archaean culture has often been described as being very similar to that of ancient Terra Renaissance during the mid-second millennium with wealth dispersed through much of the society, save for the poorest of the freemen and the class of servants who serve the patricians. A popular attraction for the citizens and visitors is the Gladium, a towering amphitheater which is home to brutal displays of vicious combat. Often, criminals are tested in the Gladium by being thrown in against vicious chrono gladiators, favored champions, or sometimes even an Astartes warrior. The latter usually only participate to fend off boredom, own their battle skill, or punish those they see as being particularly unworthy. However, on some occasions, an Astartes will be thrown into the Gladium as punishment for some failed task. He is stripped of rank, power armor, war gear, and most terrible of all, his name and lineage. If he survives for a certain number of games and shows proper penance for the failure, he will be allowed to rejoin the chapter with his rank and honor intact. While in the Gladium, or the Pits, as it is also nicknamed, Astartes are shown no favoritism and are mercilessly harassed by the baying crowd and shunned by their society until they can, once again, prove their worth. The chapter's fortress monastery resides deep in the impenetrable mists of the world's peak mountains, which, according to ancient tradition, was the home of Archaea's gods before the enlightenment brought by the emperor of mankind. The fortress monastery is both majestic and menacing at the same time. 
A strange blend of Archaea's neoclassical architecture, the Imperium's Gothic aesthetic, and the bare-bones functionality of a modern military fortress. Very rarely has the entirety of the chapter been present at one time within its halls, and there are usually only a couple of companies present. The Apothecarium dominates a large portion of the fortress, and is kept under heavy guard because it contains many dangerous strains of disease, several of them being warp-touched. The apothecaries use these pathogens to further enhance their knowledge of the powers of chaos and strengthen the immune systems of their own battle brothers. Attached to this structure is a building that embodies an eclectic mesh of religion and science. This is known as the Temple of Resilience, and this houses the body of the chapter master Alexandros the Great in stasis. The rest of the fortress is given over to armories, training grounds, quarters, and the usual facilities needed to maintain a fully functioning chapter. The Sons of Dorne do follow the Codex Astartes in all matters of organization, with one exception. They have a much larger number of apothecaries than usually present in an average chapter. The Sons of Dorne are famous for their advanced medical practices as well, which focus on disease and how to best combat it. The Plague of Unbelief and the Destroyer Hive are but two of the deadliest strains currently possessed by the chapter. The apothecaries have worked for millennia to find some cure to these dangerous diseases, but so far they have been unsuccessful. While the Sons of Dorne do have a homeworld and a fortress monastery in full working order, for the most part they are a fleet-based crusading chapter. And although they follow the tenets of the Codex Astartes in their basic patterns of organization and order of battle, in practice, the chapter has modified its tenets to better suit the needs and patterns of their deployments. An example of this is that the chapter's company captains and other senior officers are also assigned flag command of a particular starship in the chapter fleet, and are expected to act autonomously for long periods if required. The chapter's veteran first company, called the Praetorians, and elements of the 10th Scout Company are nominally based at the chapter's mobile star fortress, with the majority of their number being dispersed as needed to individual commands. As a fleet-based chapter, the Sons of Dorne are very rarely gathered en masse, except at the commencement of a major crusade called by the chapter master. Most often, the forces of the chapter are dispersed to multiple task forces, which are deployed to various expeditions and war zones across the galaxy. One of the trials required of aspirants for full initiation into the chapter is to be infected by a particularly powerful strain of disease within the chapter's apothecarium. In reality, it is impossible for a non-Astartes to actually survive, but this is not the point. The aspirant must show that he can instinctively accept his fate and place his trust in the Emperor and the chapter's Primarch Rogel Dorn, thus proving that he can master his fear in the face of imminent death, as all space marines must do. If the aspirant can do this and survive for a predetermined amount of time, he is administered a cure and considered ready for acceptance. Due to this and other highly unorthodox and dangerous training practices, the Sons of Dorne have developed a very high resilience to most forms of disease, even among the Astartes. The final test of a neophyte, after he has completed the biological transformation into an Astartes, but before becoming a full member of the chapter, is to learn a terrible secret. That's right, it's the story of the treachery and betrayal of the former chapter master Alexandros the Mad, which had resulted in the chapter war. The newly inducted battle brother is obligated to make a sacred pledge upon the chapter's honor, to guard this terrible secret with their very lives. Unlike other chapters that might possess a dark past or terrible secret, the Sons of Dorn do not go out of their way to conceal this information from their junior members. Instead, they embrace this secret as a part of their lineage and birthright for their greatest purpose is to rid the galaxy of the evil of Alexandros the Mad and his fellow renegades. Another great secret of the Sons of Dorne is the process by which a battle brother becomes a chapter master. When Alexandros the Great was on his deathbed, he made one final request, that no future chapter master should be allowed to be as weak as he had been. He perceived this, air tags, weakness as his greatest failure, 
for he had succumbed to the failure of his own body rather than a respectable enemy in combat. To fulfill this request, the body was placed in stasis upon his arrival at the fortress monastery to, ironically, preserve the ailment which had killed him. Whenever a new chapter master of the Sons of Dorne is chosen, he must pass a test similar to that of the neophytes. He must drink a small portion of Alexandros's tainted blood. If the body can overcome exposure to this deadly toxin, he is then deemed worthy of leading the chapter. It is unknown how many have failed the test, for the chosen successors are given no assistance from the apothecaries and must pass the test on their own. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you on the homeworld, the culture, and the organization of the Sons of Dorne for today. It really is a shame, in my opinion, that a chapter so lore-rich has so very few pictures on them. Now, is this chapter among your favorite loyalist or Dorne successors? What do you like or dislike most about them? As always, you are very welcome to write any thoughts and opinions on them in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. And if you want to stay a bit more up to date, you can always click the bell notification icon too. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all an awesome day. The Emperor Protects.